All right, everybody, this is the Advanced Elbow Trig Pre-Calc video on solving quadratic functions. This is a review. By the end of this, we're only going to do four examples today. You should be able to solve a quadratic function by using factoring, that's using the zero product property, extracting roots, completing the square, and using the quadratic formula. So we're going to start from the top, number one, by factoring. So this should all be review. Okay, so my first problem, we are going to solve 6x squared minus 7x minus 20 equals 0. So the reason I know I can factor this is because I told you, but if I had it set up like this every time, I would start by factoring. So I'm going to put my parentheses down because there is not a greatest common factor I can take out of all of them. Factors of 6 are probably going to be 3x and 2x. If that doesn't work, I'll look at 6 and 1. 20, I'm going to start with 4 and 5. I'm not going to put the 4 with the 2 because that would have implied a GCF of 2 up here. But I'm going to put the 4 here and I'm going to put the 5 here. Now, I need my outside and inside combination to be a negative 7x and the signs have to be different because the 20 is negative. On the outside, I have a 15x. And on the inside, I have an 8x. Can a 15x and an 8x be a negative 7x with different signs? Yes, it can. If I make it negative 15, I'm good. So negative 15 would make this negative 5, and that would be plus 4, right? So um, on the outside, I have that negative 15. On the inside, I have the 8. I'm good to go. I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. Some of you might not need to do this step. Solve for x. Subtract 4 and divide it by 3. Negative 4 thirds. And add 5 and divide it by 2. So x is going to be equal to negative 4 thirds and positive 5 halves. All right. So if I want to check that on my calculator, what should happen is there should be um, x-intercepts here because that's what I'm trying to find are my x-intercepts. Let's clear this out and just check it out, okay? So if I have the beginning equation with 6x squared minus, yep, minus 7x minus 20. I'm going to do a zoom 6 here just for a standard graph. That does look like it's at negative 1 and 1 third, and that looks like it's at 2 and a half. To check it, I'm going to actually find my x-intercepts, which are called zeros. So second trace, 0 is 2. I'm going to go to the left of this guy, which is above. Got to get above there. There we go. Press Enter. Below, press Enter. And there we go, negative 1.3 repeating. That's this, so that checks. And then the other one, second trace, 0 is 2. We're going to go to the left, which is below. Um, I know I'm below here, so I'm going to press Enter. And then I have to go above. And I know I'm above, I'm going to press Enter there. Now, this, these two little arrows are squishing that, so I should be good. Press Enter. And it's 2.5, which is what I said. So that's how you can check them graphically, because I know I had a hard time finding just graphing, or I'm sorry, just factoring them, it was check them by fact by graphing. So there is two problems like that. Okay, we're going to check them by graphing. So that's my first one. The second one is going to be extracting roots. All right, so extracting roots. This is my second problem of the day. So let's look at four times the quantity x plus 2 squared, that equals 40. All right? Extracting roots just means we want to end up taking the square root of both sides. So the first thing I'm going to do, I want to get the square by itself so I can actually square root. Let's divide by 4. I'm going to have x plus 2 squared equals 40 divided by 4 is 10. Now we can take the square root. So I'm going to have x plus 2 equals. The square root of 10, there's two of them. It's plus or minus the square root of 10. Which makes sense because when we looked at these, don't most parabolas, they're either going to hit this twice, once, or none. Well, there's my twice. Um, and then I'm going to subtract 2. x is going to equal negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 10. So your two x-intercepts, you guys, would be x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 10 and negative 2 minus the square root of 10. I'm actually good with you leaving it like that or rewriting them as points. Negative 2 plus the square root of 10, 0 and negative 2 minus the square root of 10, 0. You can always use your calculator to get estimate estimates because eventually when you're using them 
um, to find actual roots and you're using your calculator, you will not get roots in square root form. You'll get them as a decimal, but I am good with this. Third one we're going to do, actually I'll put my three down after I do my problem. Um, after extracting roots, what do I want to do next? Complete the square. So this is my third problem. Okay, completing the square, we are going to go with 4x squared minus 16x plus 23 equals 0. Now, I purposely started this like um, factoring because a lot of these you're going to have where they look like they're going to factor right away because um, this also is uh, the form that you use for the quadratic formula. I could totally use the quadratic formula for this, but I'm not going to because I have a 4x squared here. I have a 16x. I can actually factor a 4 out of a 16, and I think completing the square is going to work much better for this. So I'm going to start by subtracting 23. All right, so I'm going to have 4x squared minus 16x. Then I'm going to leave a little break here. That equals negative 23. Now I'm going to factor the 4 out here. I'm going to get x squared minus 4x. That's going to equal negative 23. All right, guys. So the goal here is to take this and make it something times something else so it's something squared. And then we'll end up dropping the 4 that we factor out. So let's think about this here. I need to make sure that if I have an x and an x, these two guys have to be the same and they have to give me negative 4. Wouldn't that be negative 2 and negative 2? All right, so if they're both going to be negative 2, I'm looking for a pen. Here we go. If they're both negative 2, is it negative 2 times negative 2 positive 4? So we're going to add a positive 4 here. Now, I added 4 here. I didn't add 4. I actually added 16. All right, so here we go. I'm going to have a 4 on the outside here, and then x minus 2 squared equals uh, negative 23 plus, 7, or plus 16. I'm sorry, that's a negative 7. I may have to take this to the right. We'll see how this goes. Let's divide by 4. So I'm going to have x minus 2 squared equals negative 7 fourths, right? All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I'm going to actually bring it over on this side. The square root of x minus 2 squared is going to be x minus 2. That's going to equal plus or minus the square root of negative 7 fourths. All right, so there's a couple things going on right here. Um, I'm actually going to add 2 first. Let's just finish this problem off and make this x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 fourths. Okay, so there's a couple things I'm going to do here. I don't want a negative inside. Remember now, that's an imaginary. So my answer is going to be x equals 2 plus or minus. This guy is going to be brought out as an imaginary unit. Okay, is there a square root of 7? No, there isn't. So it's going to be i times the square root of 7 over, is there a square root of 4? Yes, it's 2. So I'm actually okay with that. If you want to make it look pretty, it'd be x equals 2 and then plus or minus i times the square root of 7 all over 2. That's how it looks. I know it looks kind of nasty, but that's just the way it is, and that's completing the square. So what does this mean? Well, if I look up at 2, what I have is I, I would cross at 2 places, okay? Because I'd have 2 x-intercepts. Here I have none, so that means that my graph does not cross the x-intercept at all. Okay, that brings me to the last on my list, what, the quadratic formula. Number 4. Okay, the quadratic formula, I'm going to have 3x squared plus 4x plus 7 equals 0. So the first thing I would do here is I would look to see if I can factor it. I'm going to tell you right now, you can't. Next thing I would do would be, oh, can I complete the square? Wouldn't probably want to do that with a 3 and a 4 here because factoring a 3 out of a 4 would give me 4 thirds, and that's not fun. So the quadratic formula I'm going to use, x is going to equal the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, we can all see that. Every year I have kids say, Ms. Henschel, do I have to memorize it? You will memorize it. It's that simple. You're not going to want to keep looking for it. So it's one of those things you're just going to know. So do you have to? I'm going to tell you you don't have to, but you just will. All right, so here we go. A is 3. B is 4. C is 7. I'm going to kind of shorten this up. X equals the opposite of B. The opposite of a 4 is a negative 4. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. 4 squared is 16. That's minus 4 times A times C. A is 3. C is 7. That's 21. I'm going to divide this all by 2 times A. 2 times 3 is 6. 
negative 4 plus or minus, and I'm good with a 6. The square root is the thing I'm working in here, you guys. All right, so I know that 4 times 21 is 84. So I'm going to take 16 minus 84, and I'm getting negative 68. All right, now this is where we've struggled a little bit. The square root of negative 68. Okay, I wanna see if anything goes into 68 first and then we'll simplify this right here. Okay, does four go in there? I feel like it's, oh, it does, four does, four times 17. Now, that 17 tells me that there is not a perfect square that goes in there. So what I can think about this is, okay, 64 is four times 17. All right, so here we go. Isn't that negative out as an imaginary? Okay, the square root of 4 is 2, and there is no square root of 17. Okay, so it's going to be 2i times the square root of 17. Again, this right here, I'm going to, the, the negative is out as an imaginary. We took 68 and made it 4 times 17 because I needed a perfect square in there. The square root of 4 is 2, and there is no square root of 17. I really like that one. All right, so I'm going to bring this down here. This is actually negative 4 plus or minus. The square root of negative 68 is 2i, sorry, times the square root of 17 all over 6. Now you want to think to yourself, can I simplify this at all? Can I simplify this part, this part, and that part? Does anything go into all of those? You betcha, 2 does. 2 goes into negative 4, that's going to go negative 2 plus or minus. This 2 is out i times the square root of 17 all over. If I take a 2 out of 6, it's 3. That's what your x is. All right, so again, I divided two out of each of these parts, so I get negative two. I could have a one i here, but you generally don't, times the square root of 17 over three. So again, what does this mean? This means that there are no real x-intercepts. It doesn't cross the x-axis. So if you wanna look at it, we're gonna three x squared plus four x plus seven, right? Yep, sorry, it's hard for me to see this. Do I see it, do I see it? Yep, I do. And it's not hitting it at all. So that's just graphically how I can verify it, all right? So that's just a little bit of a review of the things that you guys have done so far and some of these solving techniques we're going to use when we get to inequalities. Okay, good luck.